Hello and welcome to second video in the module where we are talking about corporate level strategy. Now in this video we are going to talk about strategic directions. Well, what are those? Imagine yourself as a top level manager in an organization that is looking for some expansion of their domain. Now what options do you have? Should you just stay within the market where you already are? Or should you try to go to new markets, develop some new products? What should you do? And this is exactly going to be the topic of this video. We are going to discuss four viable options that we have if we are in this situation. So let's explore them at first. As we have said, we have a matrix with four possible strategic directions. These are identified using two dimensions. Vertical dimension is about markets. We can stay within existing markets or go to new markets. Horizontal direction is about products and services. Again, we can decide to stick with our existing products or try to create new products. What is the most common is that companies stay in the upper left corner using their existing products and markets, trying to acquire higher market share. This is what we call market penetration. Second most common scenario is upper right corner, where companies simply innovate their products and try to create new ones. This is simply new products and services development. More unusual are strategies in new markets. If company brings its existing products to new markets, we have market development. If it brings new products to new markets, we have conglomerate diversification. So those were the four options that we have. And these four options are going to be to the topic for the rest of this video. But before we go in details to each one of those, I really want to bring one definition that I think is absolutely crucial if we would like to understand corporate level strategy very well. So here is the definition. It's actually three definitions. Diversification involves increasing the range of products or markets served by an organization. Related diversification involves diversifying into products or services with relationship to existing business. Conglomerate or unrelated diversification involves diversifying into products or services with no relationship to existing business. What is this diversification? Or even better, where are we on this strategic directions matrix that we have previously described? Well, of course, we are on the right side of it because we are diversifying ourselves into the new market. And now it depends whether it's going to be related diversification so that these new products and services have a relationship to the existing business or we have unrelated diversification so that the products or services do not have a relationship to our original business. I mean, this sounds very theoretical, but in reality, there are many companies which are facing this issue nowadays. So that um, the traditional business where they have been is uh, maybe having issues or diminishing, or there are a lot of new rivals uh, that are coming to their traditional business. So they would like to react to this change, sort of defend themselves doing the diversification, either the related one or the unrelated diversification. Um, one example that comes to my mind is certainly banks. What banks do is that they have a lot of uh, financial or technological startups coming into the scene, endangering their core business. And what banks are doing is that they are trying to find the expansions of their current domains either through related diversification, which would be, say, offering financial insurance services. Insurance services are not that far from the original banking services, or they could go unrelated diversification way. So maybe the bank can be uh, having doctors at the branches, and while you are having your health checkup, you can also have a checkup of your finances. That was just an example, but there are many companies nowadays facing this issue and the challenge of undergoing diversification, either the related one or unrelated diversification. Now, once we understand the basic outline of the matrix with four strategic directions, and we also understand the concept of diversification, we can go into each one of these 
for and discuss it in detail. Firstly, we of course have the most common way, which is at market penetration. Here is the definition. Market penetration implies increasing share of current markets with the current product range. Well, this is simply about doing what we are doing, just doing it better and obtaining more of the market share. It's the most common practice of them all. Well, is this a viable option for us? If we are a corporate level manager and we are thinking about the four directions that we have as an offer, should we really do it? Should we follow up on the market penetration, on the market where we are right now? I mean, the, the, in reality, what matters the most is whether the market in which we are is high growth market or a low growth market. If it is a high growth market, then we should follow up with the market penetration because as the market is already growing, there will be more and more space within the market, more and more revenues to earn. So we should do the market penetration. However, if the market is a low growth market, then the competition is going to be hard and we shouldn't really do the market penetration and maybe look at the other viable options. Also, there are going to be two issues uh, when we try to do the market penetration. First one of them being retaliation from competitors. If this is an established market, either a low growth or high growth market, there certainly are going to be some competitors. We are definitely not the only ones in the market. And if our competitors see that we are trying to obtain a higher share of the market, they certainly are going to react to it. Secondly, there will be some legal constraints, maybe for us. And this is um, not so common practice, but um, imagine governments uh, overlooking certain markets. It's a common when it comes to gas industry, petrol industry, banking, telecommunications, and these large industries where usually are just a few players within the country. So what the government has to do is that it has to ensure that either monopoly or oligopoly does not happen. Because if it happens, then it's going to be unfavorable situation for uh, the consumer. And government should protect the, the consumer rights. And, and so it should not allow a company or a group of companies obtain too large share of the market. So to become monopolistic players. So we can face certain problems and restrictions when we are trying to penetrate the market further. Let's go on. Second option that we have is product development. Let's go for the definition. Product development is where organizations deliver modified or new products to existing markets. So we simply are an organization that is already well established on certain markets, maybe a music industry. Now you decide to deliver a completely new range of products to the same group of customers. Well, I think the greatest example that comes to my mind is Sony. Sony was having CD players and Walkmans, but all of a sudden decided to invest into research and development of MP3 players. Now, you see, you have a product that is serving the customers and you are well established in the market, yet you decide to develop completely new product that you will offer to your existing group of customers. So you will try to make a use of your, uh, of your image or, or credibility that you have created with this group of customers just to offer them the new product and maybe innovate in this way. Now, it's not so straightforward with the product development. There are certain issues that you have to address if you would like to successfully develop new product that will be appreciated by your existing group of customers. First of all, you need to accept new strategic capabilities. If you are to develop the new product, you certainly need to do things differently than you have been doing previously. So we, if we keep the example of Sony, maybe it had hundreds or thousands of employees who were for years working in research and development of CD players, and they were very good at developing CD players. What Sony has to do now is that it has to hire new people that will be working on a completely different product. And at the same time, take some of the people who have been working with CD players and group them with the newly came incomers. And this merge is going to be the product development team of MP3 players. 
this new team will have to develop new strategic capabilities, new ways of doing things, which can be tricky and risky. Talking about risk, there is of course project management risk. If you are developing something that you have not developed yet, it's quite hard to set up a timeline and also set up a budgeting. Maybe, well, usually it works the way that things cost more than what in the beginning project manager says it will cost. Also, it's gonna probably take a longer time than what is initially planned for. So you see there are certain risks that you will not be able to deliver on time, you will not be able to deliver in a promised quality, or you will not be able to deliver at all. So it's simply a new project and there are risks connected to it. Third option that we have is market development. Here is the definition. Market development involves offering existing products to the new markets. Now, it sounds like we just going to come to a new market, maybe to a new geographical area and offload our products in there and all of a sudden offer it to the new group of customers. Well, it's not like this or it shouldn't work like this. Well, the way it should work is that we have two options. Either we offer our products to new users and find new use cases for our products, or we offer it to new geographies. Now, how, how is it that, that there can be some customers, some users that haven't considered purchasing our products previously? Example would be aluminium. Previously, uh, the consumers of aluminium were packaging and cutlery manufacturers. That was years ago. Nowadays, you can find aluminium consumption in industries such as aerospace and automobiles. So what aluminium producers had to do is that they have to find new use cases for their product, which is aluminium. Hey, we come to the aerospace industry and say, you can use our aluminium to do things this way. It can be beneficial for you. And this way you will find new users for your products and hence new consumers. Now, the other option is of course new geographies. This involves internationalization. If you are successful in one country, if there is another country which is maybe similar to the original one, maybe you can come there, develop a new marketing strategies, new go-to-market strategies, maybe you can sell your products there as well. But this is a topic of internationalization. I have whole videos about internationalization. So if you would like, go search for them. Now, we need to understand one important idea. Again, you cannot just come to some market, to some new group of users and say, here is my product, you can purchase it. No, you need to analyze critical success factors that we discussed previously and then think about, hey, Will these users appreciate my product? Will this geographical area find a benefit in using my product? And really think about whether you should be entering this new market. And if you do it, you should develop specific strategies for entering it. Now, finally, we have conglomerate diversification, and that is not going to be the topic of this video. It's actually a topic of upcoming videos. So I should just briefly touch upon it. Well, it's about developing new products and taking them to new markets. So it's going to be a pretty challenging task. And that is why we are going to have special videos for it. I hope that this video gave you a good overview of the four strategic directions that we have and that we briefly described in certain level of details each one of those. I'm looking forward to see you in the next video.